said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Let us bless his holy name for the Lord. He is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Please turn with me this morning to our morning hymn as we are celebrating Black History Month and there is no critical race theory in Bethel Baptist Church. Join me as we sing, lift every voice and sing. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven God of our will, 
this morning comes from the book of the prophet Hosea, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 12th verse. The book of the prophet Hosea, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 12th verse. Reading from the New King James translation, you'll find these words. Sow for yourselves righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord, till he comes and rains righteousness on you. You have plowed wickedness, you have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies because you trusted in your own way in the multitude of your mighty men. Therefore, a tumult shall arise among your people, and all your fortresses shall be plundered. The Shalman plundered Beth Arbel in the day of battle. A mother dashed in pieces upon her children. Thus it shall be done to you, O Bethel, because of your great wickedness. At dawn, the king of Israel shall be cut off utterly. I've just read from the book of the prophet Hosea, the 10th chapter, the uh, 11, the 12th through the 15th verses. The word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the word of God. And we're going to ask Reverend King to lead us to the throne of grace. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we can come this morning in the need of a blessing. Father God, if it's not one thing, it seems to be another. Yes, yes. Realizing that you're God that knows all things, we come at them for your mercy. Father, we thank you for your mercy last evening that we slept in slumber. Mm -hmm. And then early this morning, O oh, Heavenly Father, you taught us with a finger on your divine love. Yes. And our eyes open one more time. Lord, we thank you for your food, your clothing, and your shelter. For Father God, we know that so many roads this morning didn't have a roof over their head. No food to eat, no raiment to wear. But Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you that you rocked us to sleep last night. For well, somebody tossed and turned all night long. And then early this morning, you taught them and they were able to rest. Lord, we thank you for being closed in our right mind. Realizing, oh Lord, it could have been the other way. Somebody, Father, don't know the left hand from the right hand. Somebody rose this morning, Father God, body was right with pain. And Lord, all we need is a church from heaven. we make everything all right. Father God, we need you to touch our mind that we might have a new mind. That we touch our feet that we will walk in a plain path. Mm -hmm. And then, Lord, sometimes we hear things, Lord, that we don't need to hear. And, Lord, touch our tongue because sometimes we talk too much. Mm -hmm. We say things that we shouldn't say. Yeah. We, we have broken up homes and, and destroyed community with our tongue. But Lord, have mercy. Somebody in Bethel, Father God, that need a heavenly church this morning to make everything all right. Someday, Father God, it seems that it don't do good just to get up in the morning. But by your grace and your mercy, you got us to lay on a little while longer. We just want to say thank you. And Father, I can feel your spirit all over Bethel. 
let your spirit rain down on everyone in Bethlehem today. And Lord, let their ears open to hear your word. Lord, let them not come for shape, form, or fashion. Not for sound and good, but for sound doctrine. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. In the whole multitude says, Amen, 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 amen. and Amen. Amen. As uh, our minister music is uh, out today, we're going to ask that you join us congregationally. And we will lift up hymn number 298 in our hymnal, Just a Little Talk with Jesus. Amen. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will faint his cry and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn in, and you know a little fire is burning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear. And he will answer by and by now. makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn it and Just give God praise and glory to be in the house of worship one more time. Amen. And it's such a blessing to look out and see so many of you who are here with us today. God has truly been good. And, and you know, I'm looking forward to the time Amen. when we can all come together and fellowship. Yes. Because you know, the power of worship is not just giving God praise and glory. Yes, sir. But the power in worship is when our praise bounce off of each other. Amen. You know, in, 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 in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, when John was in the throne room of God and, and he saw the seraphim and the cherubim there and they were just saying, holy, holy, holy. And, and, and we look at that, we say, oh, they say, holy, holy, holy. No, no, what was happening 
One would say holy and the other one would say holy back. And they say holy to another. And as they bounce those holies back and forth, the whole room was filled with God's glory of the power of the worship. See, because when you think about what God did for you, and I think about what God did for me, and I think about how he protected me, and you think about how he protected you, and then we start sharing that, then we realize God been good to all of us, and before you know it, that stuff get contagious. And there might be somebody in there that, I don't know why I'm here today, but when they just stop and think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for us, the power comes when we share that with one another. I'm so glad, and I'm, I'm, I'm proclaiming that we're coming on the end of this pandemic. And I know folks saying, yeah, but the virus ain't gone, but you know what? I believe that God is going to divinely protect us. I believe that he will bring us through. Now, please understand, I'm not saying this for y'all to be crazy and start doing what you need to do. Because while the CDC trying to figure out what's what, protect yourself. Amen. Until we know otherwise, protect yourself. Amen. But in the meantime, don't be scared. That's right. You know, I, I, I find it fascinating that, that folks scared to come to church but they ain't scared to go to Walmart. <laughs> you know, folks scared to go to church, but they ain't scared to go to some social function. That's right. That's right. I'm just saying. You know, we we we, we took a chance at, 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 at Christmas. Everybody said, oh, the Omicron is going. I said, you know what? We went to test when we get there, test when we get back. But you know, it was worth the risk to see my family. Yes, and I believe it's worth the risk to come into the congregation of the saints to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. I'm gonna leave that alone. I still want to encourage you to get tested protect yourselves, do what you need to do because God is good and we know his mercy endures forever. So we, we want to continue on and do all that we need to do. <laughs> amen, amen. On yesterday, we had uh, the opportunity to convene a panel at the request of Bethel Baptist Church for the purpose of ordaining uh, Minister Myron Mays. And I am happy to report to you all today that the panel voted unanimously that we proceed with the public ordination ceremony for Reverend Myron Mays. So uh, the time will be announced. I am proud to call him a son of Bethel. And we know that he will go forth and represent us well. And uh, we thank you for your support, your prayers, your encouragement of him. Because I know that God's got plans for Reverend Mays. God has his hands on Reverend Mays. And we want to encourage him to be all that God will have him to be. And we just give him praise and glory for the opportunity to share and, and to, to witness God move in his life in a mighty way. So we just give thanks. Uh, this afternoon at 1 o'clock, and we're not going to tarry long today, um, there will be a homegoing service uh, for Brother Robert Burton, uh, the owner of uh, Mackenzie's Funeral Home, who went home to be with the Lord, and uh, they're having his celebration of life this afternoon at 1 p.m. 
Uh, it will be live streamed on the McKenzie's Funeral Home uh, website. Uh, and uh, the service will take place at the Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church. And we just want you to keep the McKenzie's Funeral Home staff lifted up in your prayers during that time of bereavement. Uh, keep his sons, uh, Calvin and Howard, lifted up uh, in your prayers. The staff, keep them lifted up. The entire extended family. And um, I'm told that um, they're going to have a whole bunch of limousines and hearses and whatnot. Uh, and my son told me all that was going to take place and made me feel so guilty. I went out in the cold and washed my car. <laughs> I didn't want to be in baths. Amen. I know my wife thinks he's crazy anyway. I'm sorry. You've been crazy with me for 39 years. <laughs> and God all. <laughs> But let's keep them lifted up in prayers. Also, I solicit your prayers um, uh, for uh, my family. Uh, my cousin Earl Thompson uh, went home to be with the Lord, and uh, we will be journeying uh, to celebrate his life uh, with his immediate family. Uh, so please keep us in prayer. Uh, we, we're probably going to be FaceTiming with folks from all over the country. Uh, there were only a handful of us that had the audacity to leave Washington. Mm -hmm. And everybody back in Washington thought we were crazy for leaving. <laughs> Why you want to leave D.C.? It's good here. Yeah, it's good other places too. So uh, the handful of us that did venture off, you know, we, we want to encourage one another, uh, especially in times like these. So we just give God praise and glory for his mercy. Uh, for him uh, uh, watching over us. Uh, young Sister Mayana Shania, I heard y'all then, then, then took some names down there in the Coliseum and you're going back for one more round. Amen? Amen. 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 We're talking about the Los Chicago Women's Basketball Team. And we're excited that they are moving to the next round. Amen. And you know, let us know. We will make that trip to Birmingham. Right. You know, I, I, I like them, them times. Amen. Amen. But uh, we just want to congratulate you all. We also want to congratulate the Golden Eagles men's team of Booker T. Washington Amen. High School Amen. as they, too, have advanced to the next round Amen. in the playoffs. Amen. So it's an exciting time. Amen. So we will prepare to go forth. As I promised, we won't be long this morning, but there, there is a word that I want to share with you all. And I want you uh, to pray with the pastor as, as God has put this word on my heart. We have been in a peculiar season. It's been a difficult season. It's, it's hard to believe that it's been two years now. That we have been in, in this modified situation. Uh, in two years, we've become experts with Zoom and FaceTime, WebEx, and all of those other means of electronic communication. Uh, it's, it's been two years in which we've, we've even learned how to pay our bills online. There were a bunch of us that were reluctant to do so. I, I remember my brother and I, I, I love him dearly. I remember him telling me when our home church voted to uh, collect offerings uh, by Givelify, he said, I don't know about that. He said, because the Bible said you ought to bring them offerings. And, and I agree, uh, that's a part of the worship because folk need to see that God is still in the blessed business. Amen. And in ancient Israel, when you brought your lambs to the temple for sacrifice, and when folks saw you walked up with 50, 50 lambs, they knew it was a good year for you. Mm -hmm. And there was hope that if God blessed you, he'll bless me. Right. Folk need to physically see that. Mm -hmm. 
folk need to, to, to see the pastor walk by the box and put an envelope in. Folks need to, to see that God is still in the blessing business. Unfortunately, we also needed to have access to resources to continue to do the work. We adapted. Amen. We long for the old traditional stuff, but we adapted. As, as I pondered all that, God sent me to one of my favorite prophets, the prophet Hosea. Mm -hmm. And I want to tag a verse from the passage that I read in your hearing. And reading from the NIV, you'll find these words, Sow righteousness for yourselves. Mm -hmm. Reap the fruit of unfailing love and break up your unplowed ground, for it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers righteousness on you. It is time to seek the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we give you glory and honor. We thank you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for bringing us safely thus far. We thank you, Lord, that through many dangers, toils, and snares, you have already brought us. And you, Lord, are faithful to complete the work that you have begun in us. Now, Lord, as we come before your word this morning, as humbly as we know how, recognizing, Lord, that I am not worthy, but all that I am, all that I ever hope to be, I surrender to you. Use me as your vessel. Speak to me, speak through me, for your people need to hear from you. They need a word of encouragement, a word of exhortation, a word of correction, a word of inspiration so that we may be the people that you have created us to be, to do the work that you've called us to do. Have your way, Lord. Move in this place. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. It's time to seek the Lord. You know, Hosea is one of my favorite prophets. Uh, I remember as a young man, Reverend Jasper Williams had a sermon that he preached from the book of Hosea. And some of y'all might remember that sermon. Uh, it was entitled, I Married a Prostitute. And it was such a controversial sermon, but Hosea's ministry was controversial. Hosea was referred to as the prophet of the broken heart. Whoa. And his experience demonstrates that love yields the sweetest joy on earth, and also it yields the most profound sorrow. It goes from one extreme to the other. And, and this book, it gives the framework within that of a shattered romance Whoa. in which this young preacher went to serve at the temple at Bethel. Yeah. Yeah. Young, unmarried, and everybody figured that, you know, he would be a good catch Whoa. if we get him hooked up with the right woman. And of course, all the women with eligible daughters wanted their daughter to marry the priest at Bethel. Well. And the Bible says that he went out and married a daughter of harlotry. Come on. Now, in the 21st century vernacular, and young folks would help me out here, he went and married a thought. Well. <laughs> Now, I know some of y'all are saying, thought, what's that? Ask your children and your grandchildren. They'll tell y'all about it. He married this woman of questionable background, and she did what people of questionable background do. 
She went out there, did everything she wanted to do, and even had children that folk weren't sure if they were Hosea's children or not. She, she was a daughter of harlotry. She was a girl like that. And, and as we saw him go through this situation, and everybody was wondering, why did he marry this woman? Because God told him to. Yes, sir. He even asked God, why, why are we doing this? He said, because I want to demonstrate to my people that they're just like Gomer. Yeah. I took them out of the muck and the mire, and they want to go back and play in the mud. He said, I am using you, preacher, as a demonstration of what my people Israel have done to me. Amen. The, 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 the book of the prophet Hosea could be divided into two sections. You had the first section dealing with, with his marriage, his relationship and all that went on with that. And, and the second part of this book could be dealt with God's redemption of the fallen and the prophecies of what will happen if you don't get right. And in, in, in the 10th chapter, it, it, it comes down to the prophets saying to the nation of Israel, it's time to serve the Lord. It's time to turn your back on the stuff that you did. It's time to get this situation right. It's time to call right right and wrong wrong. It's time to get it straight. It's time to serve the Lord. Yeah. Well, that's well and fine, preacher. But 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 who was he talking to when he was saying to the, the Israelites, to the nations, it's time to serve the Lord? I submit to you, not only was he talking to them, but he's talking to us. We're in the midst of a pandemic situation and in the most technologically advanced time of the history of man, we know all about disease. We know all about how it spreads. We know all about viruses. We even know how to create drugs to uh, counteract and destroy the virus. Yet with all that we know, we see a pandemic situation take place in which almost a million people have died and nobody can figure out what happened. We throw money at the problem thinking that it'll straighten it out. We put enough money out there, people will buy masks, they'll get vaccines, everything will be all right. And the money sits in treasuries throughout the country. Nobody's spending the money to stop the mitigation of a disease. And then we're going to sit here and fight about whether we ought to wear a mask. Come on, right now. Come on, Talk about it, Patrick. It's time. To serve the Lord. Well, well, who is he talking to? Who is he talking to? I, I, I submit that he's talking, first of all, to the councils of the world that represent all the nations. It's interesting that we have a United Nations, which has a charter that we all supposed to come together. But you know what? There's one person they didn't invite to the table when they wrote the charter. God's name is nowhere in the charter in the United Nations. They won't even acknowledge that you call him one thing, I call him another. You worship Yahweh, you worship Allah, I worship the God Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No, rather than try to acknowledge any of them, we just write all of them off. Yes, sir. And then we want God to bless that mess. <laughs> Well, who else is he talking to? He's talking to parliaments and congresses where the fates of the people hang in the balance. See, so that's why you need to pray for the folk you, you, you have elected. Amen. Amen. I don't like none of them. I pray for all of them. I get mad every time I see these crazy commercials come on TV. Amen. Make me governor and I'll make folks stop wearing masks. Are you stupid? 
What about the other issues we got going on? What about the folks in Lowndes County who can't get sewage? What about the folks in the western part of the state who can't get the internet? What about all of that? That's right. Yeah. That's right. But if you make me governor, I'll get rid of the masks. Makes me sick. Who, 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 who needs to seek the Lord? Those high councils of our own government. We need to talk locally. Because we got local folks who just going through the motions. Sometimes I think they do more reaction than action. They can meet and come together when there's a problem. But if ain't nobody complaining about it, it must not be a problem. We'll just kind of kick the can down the road. Girl, they won't run me out of town. They've been trying to run me for 30 years. I ain't going nowhere yet. In our own communities, God talking to us. We'll get in our houses, lock the doors, and we won't worry about what's going on. Well, it didn't happen over here. Folks shooting up the block. Well, there's no bullets come in my house. I'm all right. They come in here. I got something. Well, what about them folk over there? We ain't got nothing. It's time to seek the Lord. And then we can't leave out the churches. Because see, our churches have become indifferent. We, 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 we have lost the burden for the lost. We figure my family okay, my children okay, my grandchildren are. They don't go here no more. I haven't done my part. I haven't raised my family. That's them folk fault over there. I ain't gonna worry about them. In the meantime, we look among us and the Lord one by one taking folk home every day. We look at First Baptist downtown and we figure, well, that can't happen to us. We ain't tell the white folks to move. Guess what? Black folk moving too. We can no longer have the luxury of sitting back and saying, well, if they don't come to Bethel, that ain't our problem. Yes, it is your problem. You have a charge. You have a God to glorify, and he commanded you to go. Well, that's the preacher's job. No, that's everybody's job. He didn't say preachers go. He said everybody go. My job is to help you go. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, you'll be going. If you ain't going, I must be doing something wrong. Right now. You know, this sword swing both ways. Right. Right. I don't understand before Mr. Jones, how can they go? I don't know. I told him, what did you show him? That's on me. Yes, we, 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 we. We, we uh, look at who needs to seek the Lord, the high councils of the world, the parliaments and the congresses, the high council of our local governments, our, our own communities, our churches, but we also need in our own hearts mm -hmm. to seek the Lord. Amen. Our hearts have gone cold. Our minds are divided. And our hands are idle. Mm -hmm. We've gotten to the point where it's comfortable. I hear people telling me all the time, you know, I like going to church on Zoom and WebEx. I can have my coffee. Well, can't you just put that cup of coffee aside for an hour? Come worship mm -hmm. the Lord. You're going to drink all the coffee you want. That's right. That's right. There's power when we come together. Amen. Our own hearts have, have 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 gotten cold. We 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 come to church and and we go through the motions, but we forget that we have a charge. Amen. It's time for us to seek the Lord. Well, that's a well and fine preacher, but but why now? 
why, why is it so urgent that we seek the Lord now? Why should our witness uh, be urgent in this particular season or, or out of season? Uh, why should the unsaved person give more earnest heed to the things which we've heard? You know, why, why, why now? I'm glad you asked that question. See, first of all, now is an appropriate time because the time for sowing is passing us by. The time for harvest is upon us. You know, one of the things I, I found interesting about gardening, a little bit that I've done in my life, is that you got a brief window to sow your seed. If you sow it too early, it won't sprout. And if you sow it too late, you just wasted your time. My grandfather, even after he stopped uh, growing uh, gardening and subsistence farming, he would still buy a Hager's Town Almanac every year. Couldn't understand what was significant about the Hager's Town Almanac. But the Hager's Town Almanac was one of the oldest almanacs in, in, in the nation. And they would plot the sunrise, sunsets, the time that you need to plant. They had all that stuff laid out. I remember when my sister got married and she had a garden wedding and she wanted to get married outside and my mother said, well, I don't know about the weather. My grandfather went to the almanac and said, what dates are you looking at? And they showed him the date. He said, well, yeah, that's a good day. And I'm like, well, what does that book know about the weather? <laughs> It was a perfect day. The azaleas went bloom. Everything was wonderful. I was a believer after that. That almanac was no something. See what I'm what you're saying, preacher? What I'm saying is that everything has its season, and every season starts, and every season comes to an end. And if you move too late in the season, you won't have a fruitful harvest. And if you move too early in the season, you might not finish the season. We are in a very ripe season right now. Preacher, how are we in the middle of a ripe season and we're in the middle of a pandemic? I'm glad you asked that question. God has allowed all of this to come. He's allowed all these challenges to face us. He's allowed all these obstacles to come up so that first we would stop and say, wait a minute, God doing something. He's moving his hand in our midst. Something going on here. Second of all, it makes us look at how we've been doing stuff and recognize that some adjustments need to be made. Because if we're to go into the rest of this season, if we're to go into the next season, there's some things that we used to do we can't bring with us into the next season. There's some ways we used to act that we can't act in this new season. There's some things that we used to do that won't operate in the season that we we're getting ready to move into. I want to afflict your comfort right now. That time of coming to the house of worship and putting in one hour on Sunday and say, okay, Lord, I've done my job. No. Because now the challenge is that there are people out there in the street who don't know Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. And they don't want to hear nothing you got to say about Jesus if they're hungry. Amen. They don't hear nothing you got to say about Jesus if they got problems that they don't know how to deal with. Amen. They don't hear nothing you got to say about Jesus if they worried about if it rain, they're going to be raining in my house. Amen. They won't hear nothing you got to say about Jesus if they got an immediate need that hasn't been met. Which means we're going to have to change the way we do business. I thank God for all of those who have cooperated with the feeding ministry that we've done in conjunction 
with Under the Tree Ministries. Now, yes, I'm putting a plug in for it. Well, Under the Tree Ministries, who's that? That's Reverend Sterling Marshall from Mount Sinai Baptist Church. What he has done, he has created an opportunity where other churches can come alongside him and help him do what God has put on his heart. Just because God put it on one person's heart, that don't mean they're supposed to do all the work. And as a result, we saw that and said, hey, we, we can't do everything, but we can do a little something. So on Saturday mornings, fourth Saturday every month, putting in the plug, we prepare breakfast to feed these folks who might not get a hot meal any other way. Right. One, one Saturday out of the month, Bethel is there with Under the Tree Ministries to help feed some folk, and in doing so, showing them what the love of God looks like. Now, I know some folks say, well, they just giving them some sausage grits and biscuits. I don't understand. Yeah, but some folk, they just need to see a face that's smiling, that don't want nothing from them, that just want to let them know God loves you. God has blessed us. And, and you know, ooh, God, mm, he's awesome. In the midst of a pandemic, when they were shutting stuff down, when people didn't know whether they were going to have a job, when we didn't know who was going to live or die, God allowed us to build a building. And, 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 and I'm telling you right now, if you're tempted to go by and look and say, oh, look at what, oh, isn't that, what, isn't that nice what we done? No, God didn't give you a building because we all that. He gave us a building to be a blessing to somebody else. Now the challenge is, Lord, how can we use these resources that you have blessed us with to be a blessing in this place? Amen. It's time to serve the Lord. Yeah. And the window is brief. Stuff changing right before our eyes. We don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. Amen. Because the time is coming when the time to seek the Lord will end. Yeah. God got his limits. Amen. He just didn't open the door and say the door is always going to be open, but there's going to be a time when the doors get closed and nobody will be able to get in. You don't believe me? Go ask the folks in Noah's time. 100 years, Noah preached one sermon. It's going to rain. Rain was that. You keep talking about this rain. We ain't never seen no rain before. He, he just running off. And digging that, building that big boat. Ain't even no water around him. He's building a boat. What's wrong with that fool? He says, it's going to rain. And you need to get ready. You need to come on in. Man, you crazy. I ain't got time for that. Then God told him, put all the animals in the boat. Why are you collecting all the man? Man, they stink over there. Every time you keep watching them animals up in there, I don't know what's going on over there. Then one day the door shut and somebody said, I felt something. Maybe this is that rain that he was talking about. <laughs> no, <laughs> all right, no, let me in. The door locked. God got the key. Amen. The time is coming when the door will be shut and nobody have the opportunity to get in. We have a message that's immediate and eternal. And that message is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God so loved the world that he said those who confess with their mouths and believe in their hearts that Jesus is Lord, that he would receive them, write their names in the Lamb's book of life, and they will be saved. Now, now get this. This is what I love about it. You're not just going to be saved when you die by and by or pie in the sky, that you're going to go to heaven when you die. But he said you got eternal life right now. Well, if I got eternal life right now, how is that benefiting me? Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. When
when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you are a child of the King. There's some stuff that's going to happen for you and to you because your name is in his book, because you are his child. He promised never to leave you or forsake you. He promised to illuminate and teach you in all things. He promised to divinely protect you. He promised to prosper you and bless you so you can be a blessing to somebody else. He made some promises that if those who put their trust in him should not be put ashamed. And then he promised that when the time comes, you got somewhere to go and somebody will come meet you. When the time comes, because we all going to have to leave here, it don't end at the cemetery, but it ends in the throne room of God. <clears throat> he sent his son uh -huh. who died for sins that he didn't commit Whoa. to pay a debt that he didn't know Whoa. for people that he did not know but he created us yeah. he paid a debt that we couldn't pay yeah. Some folks say, well, I, don't, I don't understand, Reverend. You got to make it plain. See, it's just like you got a speeding ticket and you go to the court and the judge said your fine is $500. And you know you ain't got $5 in your pocket. Yeah, right. and, and, and if I can't, you know the deal. You can't pay the fine, you got to do the time. Yeah. And while you're sitting there figuring out how you're going to pay this fine, the judge steps down off of the bench takes off his robe, addresses the court, and say, I'll pay the fine. That's what Jesus did for us. And the world needs to know that there's a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. They need to know that they took him to that cross, hung him high, stretched him wide, he died died one Friday evening. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. He laid there all night Friday, all day Saturday, all night Saturday night, but early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. And because he got up, we're going to get up. He sealed our eternal destiny. Yes. And all we got to do is tell somebody. It's time, folks. We got work to do. It's time. Will you join me? Because he's coming back. Amen. Just like he said he would, he's coming back. And as the old folk used to say, I don't want him to catch me with my work undone. He's coming back. It's time to serve the Lord. Amen. 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 I want to go where Jesus is. Oh,
to those who are under the sound of my voice who are out in internet land, radio land, and TV land, we want you to know that there is a fountain filled with blood. And all you have to do is say, Lord, I am a sinner. Please own me as your child. I repent of my sin. And he will receive you. Your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And get this, you don't get eternal life when you die. You get eternal life right now. All you have to do is receive the gift. It's time. It's time. Amen. We want you all to remain prayerful. Let us keep our bereaved families lifted up in prayer. We thank God for those who are with us who've been under the weather, those who had the opportunity to share with us today. We just give God praise and glory. Amen. We just ask that you remain prayerful in this season and, and get ready. I'm, I'm looking forward to the time. We, we, we got a couple of pieces of pig on the stick and, and some other stuff. We're going to fire up the grills and we're going to fire up all them cookers and stuff we got over there. And I'm ready to fry some fish. We got some fish, Deacon. We're ready to go. Amen. I'm looking forward to being able to sit down and break bread with you. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to do it soon. Hearts and minds together as one. Father God, thank you. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us and keeping us safe thus far. Thank you, Lord. And even in this difficult time that you have reminded us that it's time to seek your face. Turn from our wicked ways. And you said that you would hear from heaven, forgive our sin, and heal our land. We claim that healing right now in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, bless us as we leave this place. Watch over us as we go up and down the highways and byways. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine down upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance toward you and grant you his peace. And all God's children said together, Amen. 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 God bless you. God keep you with our prayer. Amen.